Good Sunday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Otic. We've got a beautiful Sunday evening going on. The clouds have cleared away for most of the Mid-South. A few of them left over. Hopefully that's not a problem down to around Oxford, where the University of Mississippi was holding an ast astronomical open house going on for about the next 20 minutes or so. So if you have the chance, if you're around Oxford, you can still get down that direction and learn a little bit more about astronomy and a couple more ones coming up throughout the rest of the school year. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about what's going on with astronomical stuff or get your kids involved in that, uh, we'll show you a little bit more about that coming up here in just a little bit. Plus, severe weather season number two is coming up for the Mid-South area in the course of the next several days and weeks. We'll be getting again closer to uh, the possibility of more severe weather for the Mid-South area as we get into around the area close to October, November, and December. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit and how you can get ready for what's going on uh, in and around the area as well. So stay tuned for more on that in just a little bit. Currently in the Mid-South, again, the conditions are decently quiet and we'll continue to see, again, some pretty quiet conditions for the next several days. We just do not have too much of anything going on uh, in the way of major amounts of change taking place anytime soon. Uh, if you're looking for warm conditions to continue, if you like the, winter, the, like the warmer weather of summer and would rather not have winter around here quite so quickly, well, We've got a forecast that you will like coming up here in just a little bit. Adding our Facebook viewers into the mix here for this evening. Again, welcome to everybody for tuning in tonight on Periscope, Twitter, and also on Facebook for tonight. Again, we are live from Memphis, Tennessee, and keeping you updated on what's going on. You can find out more with the weather here at wreg.com slash weather. More information on the forecast is available right here in the blue bar, and more information about social media, no matter what we're talking about on screen here, you can find out more social media information here and you can find me on all those icons up above my head most importantly in the blue bar up on top you can find my email address and if you'd like to know more about what's going on if you'd like to send a direct message please do so we can't run this without you letting us know a little bit more making certain you're paying attention there about what's going on in the mid-south where it comes to weather but if there's something you'd like to see on here let me know because i can't do this without you so please keep an eye on what's going on there weather bug cameras for the mid-south Again, not showing much of anything else. Jeremy Feathers on Facebook. Welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning on in for this evening. Excuse me a second while I wobble the camera back into a semi-close view of what we want to take a look at for tonight on Facebook. Rest of the area tonight, again, pretty quiet. Not much haze or fog to be seen here. More of our weather bug cameras available at wreg.com slash webcams. Not seeing a lot where it comes to rainfall out there, although we do have a couple of echoes showing up. It's a little bit of activity way back over into around the Tennessee River Valley for this evening, and a couple of minor echoes around Stuttgart and DeWitt in Arkansas. Beyond that, we don't really have too much of anything else going on uh, for the Mid-South this evening, so definitely pretty quiet out there, and hopefully going to be staying that way. Chances of rain would be nice. Arkansas is seeing an increased fire risk, uh, wildfire danger increasing by just a little bit. Nothing huge, <clears throat> excuse me, but again, it is going to be the possibility of some very dry conditions over the next few days. So expecting without much rainfall to be occurring that we may see the possibility of some wildfire danger starting to increase out there. So we'll keep you updated on that over the next few days. Starting off with earthquakes from the United States Geological Survey and from the University of Memphis Center for Earthquake Research and Information. Nothing showing up in the way of earthquakes here in the Mid-South in the course of the last 24 hours. So things on the New Madrid Fault. Yes, it's a weather program. No, this is tech technically not having anything to do with, again, weather. And for those of you pur purists out there, no, this is not, again, something we feature on a regular basis, but it is something we do pay attention to because the New Madrid Fault lies just north of Memphis, and we want to make certain we're keeping track of everything we can get from out of this. If you'd like to know more about this, all you have to do is go to earthquakes.usgs.gov for more from the Center for Earthquake Research and Information and from the University of Memphis uh, Center for Earthquake Research Research and Information, and the United States Geological Survey. Currently in the tropics, things are a little bit less uh, problematic at this time. We're not seeing a lot in the way of development from hurricanes, and here's a good possible reason why. We're seeing, again, a lot of dust making its way off the surface of the Sahara and moving this direction. Now, as it does, all that dust coats the air around the Atlantic, and that actually does a very good job of kind of blocking out anything in the way of of 
hurricane development. So this right here is some very good news uh, for hurricane season that we're seeing a reduction in the amount of hurricanes actually taking place. And here's hoping it actually stays that way. And it's actually having an effect from the National Hurricane Center. You can see at this time that the uh, current forecast is not showing anything developing for the next about two days. So that is really good news uh, to give a lot of people in the Caribbean back down toward the Gulf of Mexico off Florida a break from all the catastrophic weather that we've had over the course of the last uh, few weeks. So that, again, will help things out by just a bit. Temperatures in the Mid-South area, well, we did have temperatures out there. Give me just one second. This is a really good website to have when it comes to looking at information. It's preview.gov uh, e preview.weather.gov slash edd. This is the Enhanced Data Display. If you've never used this before, very handy for uh, emergency managers to get an idea as to what's going on uh, with the weather out there. Currently showing the temperatures across the Mid-South. Still looking at 80 degrees around, uh, looks like West Memphis clicking in uh, with temperatures around 80 degrees. And most of the rest of the Mid-South in the 70s for this evening. Looks like a couple of 80 degree readings up around Jonesboro. Uh, one in Clay County, Missouri, at Piggott, Arkansas, and then mainly mid to upper 70s across much of the rest of the area. Beautiful weather in the Mid-South. Again, some clouds drifting on through from time to time. Uh, Arkansas, Tennessee, Mississippi, uh, seen on the satellite picture. And again, this is going to be uh, what we see for the next couple of days. It's kind of clouds off and on. Uh, Kevin Dunn, how high is the dust? Sorry about that, but Facebook is really kind of wobbling my messages around. Uh, do ships at sea notice it? No, not technically. The dust in the atmosphere that you're looking at here on the display from earth.nullschool.net is high enough in the atmosphere that it uh, basically filters out a lot of the sunlight, but it does not really get noticeable down toward the surface where the ships are. Now, we can have uh, thick enough dust to where it can go all the way across the ocean and do a pretty good job of coating us, not to mention there are times to where we can have dust off the desert southwest making its way here or even dust from off the Gobi Desert uh, in and around China heading our direction and that is what can coat our cars and trucks in the Mid-South, believe it or not, uh, from time to time out there. So good question on that. And anybody got any more questions, drop them into the comments section. We'd love to have you along for the ride on that. Here's what we're looking for for the next couple of days. Again, so far, high pressure over the East Coast is remaining very strong. And that is doing a good job of telling these next storm systems on their way from the West Coast. Hold it. Stop. You're not coming through here. And if you do, we're going to have to kind of take your energy away from you. And that's exactly what's going on. So high pressure is doing a good job of keeping the cold fronts at bay well back to our west. So from the Great Lakes to the Rockies, plenty of rain and some thunderstorms, even some severe weather possible later on tonight, and some pretty good rain and snow in the high country of the Rockies, getting back from Montana into around Colorado and Utah. Could be some problems going on there, but nothing going on in and around the Mid-South area uh, throughout the course of the next couple of days as that area of high pressure continues to hold in place and not do too much of anything else. So the National Weather Service has, as of right now, 0% chance of anything really developing in the way of hazardous weather out across the Mid-South. So definitely some good news on that. We'll take a look at the seven-day forecast coming up here in just a little bit. want to remind you that Skywarn training is going on. The next two meetings will be coming up this week. Tomorrow, Monday the Second at Itawamba Community College. That'll be in Fulton, Mississippi at 6.30 tomorrow night. And then again on the 3rd of October, that's Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. in Jackson, Tennessee at the Jackson Madison County EOC 239 Grady Montgomery Drive. After that, plenty of other meetings coming up all the way into November. So you've got a whole bunch of these meetings come up, coming up to where you can get trained on becoming a Skywarn spotter. This class teach you what to look for and what to call in to the National Weather Service when severe weather hits. And keep in mind, as I said at the top of the show, we are getting into that second severe weather season peak. So now would be the time to make certain that you are ready and know what to do before severe weather happens. These are great classes for kids. I would say about as young as eight or nine years old if they have a bent on learning weather, if at all possible, if they're science related, if they'd like to get 
uh, more of a control on an uncontrollable situation with the weather. These classes can teach you what you need to know to be a little bit more confident and a little bit less scared when it comes to severe weather. So I would highly, highly recommend these for adults and for kids, I'd say about eight to nine years up with parental supervision. They teach you what to look for, how to read the radar scope. They teach you a little bit more about what to call into the National Weather Service. The NWS will give you a special toll-free number that only you will have to call in to let them know what's going on so you don't have to worry about getting stuck on hold or using voicemail or anything like that. So these things right here will be some of the best things that you can possibly do to get yourself ready to go uh, for severe weather purposes. So please keep that in mind. Also want to pass this along from Shelby County Office of Preparedness. The public training course, it's Community Emergency Response Team Training, well over on the left hand or right hand side of your screen, kind of off to the side. You can't really see it on Periscope or Twitter, but it's over there. Uh, it's community Emergency Response Team Training. I'm an Eagle Scout, and I thought I knew everything there was to know about first aid, emergency preparedness, search and rescue, uh, disaster psychology, fighting fires, stuff like that. I took this class from the city of Collierville in 2008, I want to say, and I got schooled on this thing. And this is a great course to teach you what you need to know to be ready for the next disaster coming your direction. It teaches you a lot of great stuff that you need to know. It's time intensive. There's no question about that. Uh, it's about three days worth of work, but it's very, very well worth it. And I would really highly recommend taking this course if you have the time to do so for your uh, place of worship, volunteer organization, your business, just you in general. Taking this will get you a lot more confident about what to do before, during, and after the major severe weather events. Uh, the earthquakes, as we talked about from the New Madrid fault line, God forbid, a terrorist attack, something like that. This can help you stay ready, and I would really recommend this. So these next courses coming up will be taught on October 28th and November the 4th. That'll be at the end of the month. They are free. You have to sign up for them. And again, great opportunity to learn more about what goes on. Disaster psychology, triage, hazmat, disaster preparation, uh, creating a go bag, uh, what to look for in security situations when it comes to things like terrorism that will be held at the Shelby County Office of Preparedness. That's at Mullen Station Road, Building C, CERT Classroom in Memphis. Uh, 18 years and older unless you're accompanied by a parent or a guardian and you do need to sign up for it. Next classes, again, will be coming up October 28th and November the 4th. So you can find out more about that at staysafeshelby.us if you'd like to know more about what to look for there. So a great opportunity to learn more about what's going on and how you can get ready to go. Seven-day forecast looks like this. Again, for the next couple of days, not much is going to be changing anytime soon. Things are very quiet for right now and really stable. So outside of these little pesky chances of a shower or a thunderstorm in the afternoon and evening, there's really not that much going on uh, right on in through the rest of the week. But if you notice coming up towards Saturday, Saturday there's a 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms there. This, again, is going to be our best chance for getting some uh, much-needed rainfall. Pretty dry out there. The Mississippi River, very low at this point. What we're looking for is right after this, not this week, but the week after, the second week of October, we could be seeing some much much nicer and much, I might add, much closer to fall-like temperatures in the Mid-South, as in 77 toward next, next Monday, and maybe in the lower 60s as we get toward uh, next Tuesday or so. So cross your fingers, have some patience, and we will be getting back to those numbers. If you love the winter, uh, the summertime weather, Hey, we've got plenty to, for you to choose from. No question about that. It's just going to be a while before we get uh, into the nicer conditions out across the Mid-South. Stay tuned for more coming up. Again, we'll have tons of information available on my Facebook page at facebook.com slash austinonic, W-R-E-G. Uh, also, excuse me, available on my Twitter page at twitter.com slash aonic underscore W-R-E-G-3. Thanks to everybody for sending in some great pictures, including Jim, Go Jim Go going going on, excuse me, over the last few days. That was a great cheeseburger tonight. Rest of the day, again, into the rest of the forecast period, we've gotten 3,000 pictures so far on my Instagram page. So thanks to everyone uh, for sticking around and for your great submissions out there. And don't forget to catch everybody, uh, again, commenting on all sorts of stuff on my uh, Periscope page. Hey, look, it's me watching me watching me. That's cool. I haven't seen that before. Uh, again, more information going to be available. 
as we go throughout the course of the rest of the day. Now, that's neat right there. I haven't seen that before. Uh, what we're going to be taking a look at again for the next few days is just warmer weather. Updates on my forecast throughout the rest of what's left of the weekend on the East Arkansas broadcast stations. And we'll be live with Bob and Josh again tomorrow with AM 730 Yahoo Sports Radio. Talk back live on Twitter if you'd like to join in. Uh, if you can't listen on air because you're too far away from the signal, listen online at talkbacklivenetwork.org. They would love to have you along for the ride. News, weather, sports, commentary, all sorts of great things. And that's available Monday through Friday on AM 730 in Memphis. We'll be on a little bit late tonight thanks to the fact that the NFL ran over by just a little bit this evening. So we'll be on at about 1030 somewhere in there. So join us for News Channel 3, the late edition. Kristen Holloway has the news. Mike Sadie has a very busy day in sports. And of course, yours truly with your complete forecast. And of course, throughout the rest of the week on News Channel 3. Thanks to everybody for joining us. Stay tuned for more with News Channel 3 on air and online the rest of the weekend and into the rest of the week.